Okay, we're back with another one. Everyone loves to hate Tesla, but some employees really like them. So we're going to go and show you an actual tweet from one of the employees that really appreciate Elon. There's nothing new. I would appreciate him too. All right. But we're going to tell you, you know, big Walter, he's always hating and he's always trying to make things seem emotionally bad and whatever. Here he goes talking his blibber. Let's listen to what he's got to say. At Twitter headquarters, and he said, we don't really need three different server farms. And the engineers say, well, yes, we do, because we need backups and we need caching or whatever. And he says, no. He decides they should get rid of the servers in Sacramento. Well, they say, fine, but that'll take six months. He said, no, you can do it in six weeks. He's getting really dark, and they don't know how to. So hold on, stop it, because this guy does this the whole book. He gets really dark. What do you mean? And plus, you're not a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Like this, he's getting really dark. Like, bro, he he's a leader. He's a boss. I, I, I know you don't know nothing about that. Maybe you were born in a gentle beer telegram area where it was just like kisses and hugs, but he's being a boss, right? Employees sound a little bit lazy to me. Talking about it's six months to do this. Yeah, if you get up off, yeah. I'm like, bro, what? Man, ooh, the nerve, man. I don't... I never did that, bro. I mean, maybe I'm just different too. When I worked and I had a supervisor, a captain or a general come and say, hey, this is the orders. And even if it seems a little bit expedited, I'm going to say, hey, sir, we're going to see what we can do. We're going to get it done. Let me round up my Marines and get it done. Execute it. Ooh, rah. That's it, bro. What you mean? What's the timeline, sir? I'm going to need it done within six weeks. Roger that. We're going to try to make that happen. I'll give you constant updates. Once I lay out a plan, I'll reach back out and I'll have it done within 24 hours. Let's get it. It ain't no, oh no, man. It ain't going. It, da, 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 da. Because at the end of the day, if a commander, a general is coming to me saying, hey, man, we're going to need to get it done within six weeks. And I'm even thinking in my head like six months. I'm going to be like, well, I thought this, you know, the timeline would be six months, but let's expedite it. Let's get it done. I'm going to get the guys together. I'm going to make it happen. Because also, I don't know what the general is dealing with. The general is dealing with other things. So I only know what he told me, which is it's got to be done within six weeks. Me coming out with my six months estimation, I don't even know what's the reason he's demanding this expedited timeline. It could be something that's beyond my station. That happens. So net net, I don't even got to ask for an explanation. I'm just going to go out with the troops and execute it because it can happen. And guess what? It did happen. I had to deal with him because it was like a month after he took over Twitter. And by the end of the meeting, he said, you can do it in six days. And he decides he's going to fire them. December 23rd is like two days before Christmas. He does fire them. But Christmas Eve, he's flying from San Francisco. See, that's good. He fired them before Christmas. Let him go back home to spend time with his kids. They're like, what you mean? I fire you before Christmas. You can go back and be with your family at Christmas. What you mean? Drink some eggnog, eat some turkey, get some cranberry up in your stomach, and you'll be all right, B. Like, I'm helping you out. Nobody see that? That's that's not dark. That's light. I showed you the light. You know what I'm saying? Rudolph the Red No Reindeer had a very shiny nose. You can go back home and sing Christmas carols with, with the clan. What you mean? So shout out to Elon for firing them before Christmas would well, be messed up. It's me got you. I'll have you working during Christmas and then fire you after Christmas. <laughs> that would be, I, I'll be like, all right, Eli, that's a little bit, that's a little bit messed up, but hey, do what you do. But at the end of the day, I fired you before Christmas. What do you mean? You want to fire you afterwards? Come on. Just go to Austin. You might spend too much money. So you know what I'm saying? But, oh, what's Elon doing? Is he at home with his family? Nah, he's in the battlefield, just like a general should in Texas to go home for Christmas. Elon Musk makes a U-turn in his airplane and they go to the server facility. The guard there is like flummoxed. It's Christmas Eve and they're forcing their way in and Musk turns to his... How are you forcing your way in in your own company? You ain't forcing your way in. You're just walking in. See, this guy be over exaggerating. They're forcing their way in. Like, come on, old man. Bodyguard and says, do you have a pocket knife? Yeah. And cuts the cable to the servers. And they got rid of that server farm in Sacramento. But it's why 80% of the people who worked at Twitter are gone. He was at Twitter. They're head because they're ineffective, inefficient, and they, they can get fired. Like, come on, my guy. Right? Shout out to everybody else, which was funny in the comments, right? A bunch of people were saying, like, is the FBI, CIA up in there, right? 80% gone and everything still works fine. Sounds like what we need to do with the government. <laughs> Shout out to them. People, people don't be rocking with the government, right? And he's not forcing his way into something he owns. 
It's his right to destroy his own property and not even destroy it. Just unplug it. It's his right. He can unplug his own stuff. He forced his way in. This guy's over exaggerating. Like, bro, I know you're trying to sell a book, but come on, man. Stop being emotional. Imagine how U.S. government wastes tax money. The same way Elon cut 80% of Twitter is the same approach we must take towards our federal and state government. Twitter is a cesspool of diarrhea people. Okay. <laughs> and they were all milking the sh out of Twitter. There was no need for it anyways. Exactly, bro. People was milking it in Twitter. Oh, I'm lying? Am I lying? If I'm lying, I'm flying up here, right? A day, a day in the life of Twitter employee. I hope people took it off. I hope people took it down because the day in the life of somebody on Twitter was bogus. Shout out to Joe Rogan. He's going to show this. And then we're going to go to the people who appreciate him because we heard all this conspiracy theory like Elon getting dark. But let's see this. Let's see this. My life as a Twitter employee. This so this past yeah. week went to SF for the first time at a Twitter office, badged in. Honestly, took a moment to just soak everything in. What a blessing. Also started my morning off with an iced matcha from the pit. Then I had a meeting. So quickly scheduled one of these little pod rooms, which were so cool. They're literally noise canceling. Took my meeting, got ready for bunch. Look how delicious this food looks. Oh my goodness, I was so overwhelmed. Then made my way down to this log cabin area. I don't know what this is, but it was really cool. Played some food with my friends to kind of unwind a bit. Um, unwind, tough day. Also found this really <laughs> cool meditation call. room that I thought was room. super neat. Um, I didn't do any yoga, but they have this yoga room if you are a yogi, so also thought that was really cool. Um, had a couple more meetings in the afternoon, had a ton of projects that we needed to knock out. Say hey to my teammates. Um, <laughs> went, to the, went to the library to kind of get some more work done. Obviously had to have our afternoon coffee, so made some espresso. And then before leaving for the day, had some red wine um, that's on tap went up to the rooftop and just honestly enjoyed the beautiful weather. <laughs> so awesome trip. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Amazing. She did one meeting. That's a six figure salary kids. You could be so lucky to have a job that doesn't really exist <laughs> and you get wine on tap and you get espressos and green matcha tea and you get to go to the meditation room because you got on wine. Well, they can't afford to give people a year off then because they, they clearly don't need clearly. them. Woo! But Elon's dark. Elon's dark, everybody. What in the galaxy? That lady was going to yoga. She was taking meals, had a fruit smoothie. She had a flaming mignon, some crabs, some great poupon. She had a pe pe peanut butter and jelly sandwich. She had a casserole. She had a croissant. What? She was in a nap pot. She played a little foosball. Bruh, while I was doing this. See, that's how I was working. That's what I was doing. I was, yes, sir. I was out here, you know, serving the country. She was out here serving herself. Man, that's that's crazy, my guy. No surprise, right? Wow. Man, let's go to somebody who actually cared. Elon at AI. Elon and AI at Tesla. All right. So this came from one of the employees who's just showing love, right? He works at Tesla. He's showing mad love, right? And as you see throughout this whole thing, Elon Musk has been a key driver of AI and autonomy at Tesla. He has always pushed us to achieve great things, even when such ideas were seemingly impossible at the time. Some examples back in 2014, Autopilot started on a ridiculously thin computer that only had 384 gigabytes of memory and little to little compute, right? He asked for engineering team to implement lane keeping, lane changing, longitude control for vehicles, curvature, and et cetera. Many, even in the team, thought that the request was crazy. Nonetheless, he never gave up and pushed the team to achieve this very difficult goal. In 2015, beyond all odds, Tesla ships the world's first autopilot system. The second closest such product only came to market many years later. That's one example, guys. 
I, I give you the example and the stories of Elon. You could check out my stories. They're posted up on my YouTube. All right. So this is an employee with some common sense, not the lady who was getting a mocha china at, at, at Twitter. This is different. Okay. In 2016, Tesla started doing all the computer vision required for autopilot in-house instead of depending on external vendors. That's called vertical integration for you slow people in the background. Many people thought it was insane to bet the product on developing the vision system from scratch within a few months, which had taken other companies a decade or more. Yet we achieved this target within 11 months. This was a strategically important move that started the development of a strong AI team at Tesla. Again, doing great things that most consider insane. The examples continue. And it's good to hear from the good employees so that they can provide you with this information. So next time you hear something about Elon, especially him being dark or, oh man, Elon, he might not do any. This is what he does to the people that work with inside the company. And remember, this skill set that these employees acquire, if they continue on with this, they'll be outstanding anywhere they go. They'll learn how to challenge and push the parameters instead of being Locked in box thinking that that's impossible. Let's continue. Not only did he push for strong AI software, but also for powerful AI hardware. Tesla, which others thought was just a car company, was making custom silicon to run neural networks efficiently. This hardware that was originally designed in 2017 came to production in February 2019 and remains extremely competitive with hardware coming out to date. For reference, this five-year-old AI computer has roughly 8x the AI inference compute as a state-of-the-art Apple M3 chip. It is still able to run the latest end-to-end -end neural networks built on the top of the least AI technology. Or the latest, excuse me. So it's continuing to make increases. It's continuing to do things that other people are not. And let's finalize this whole video with this last one, because he brings it home. He was one who bet on vision and AI to solve autonomy instead of relying on sensor, crutches, and high-definition maps. For anyone who has experienced the latest version of FSD, if you guys have, check out the videos on YouTube, right? It might be obvious that it can see all important things and drive the car based on pure vision. However, back in 2020 and earlier, it wasn't obvious to most. In fact, many experts, and quotations on the experts, right, in the field ridiculed Tesla and Elon for those choices. We have proved them wrong by shipping supervised FSD to millions of cars and shown that with good AI software, the car is able to handle the complexities of city driving, such as making turns, handling intersections, yielding to pedestrians, and etc. just by seeing outside. In fact, we even removed the radars and the ultrasonic to just really focus on the heart of the problem, which is AI, guys. Today, it's almost paradoxical that Tesla have the latest amount of raw sensors, yet have the most autonomous capacity capable to any production car. And that's compared. Pulling off such a contrary bet was only possible because of his extreme conviction and deep understanding of this problem. He kick-started the work for humanoid robots at Tesla in 2021, again, before any chat GPT and other obvious examples of the rise of AI. Just like the vehicle autonomy, Optimus is also be get, being developed to be competent, scalable, and cost-effective in order to widely serve the world. I could go on, but plainly, Elon is critical for Tesla's success in AI, and it is his combination of deep technical understanding, insane perseverance, and relentless hard work that have positioned Tesla to be a leader in real-world AI. Elon, technical intuition, to make these important decisions way before others see it is unmatched. If not for Elon's ambition, Tesla might have dwindled to become just another car company. In the future, fully autonomous cars and useful household robots will be commonplace, and the world will think that this was how it was always supposed to be. 
until then, we need Elon Musk to push the frontier because he sees it already. Mic drop. Because of Elon, Tesla will put auto in the automobile. It doesn't get better than that, guys. That's a mic drop. I don't have to say anything. I allow the employees to say it to you guys. I hope you understand this and enjoyed this video. And if you didn't, you probably love to hate Tesla. Nothing new there. I'll see you guys on the next one. And this was marvelous. Peace out.